Welcome back! This is the fourth part of the series on making music with Milky Tracker. Feel free to subscribe and press the thumbs up button if you like this video. Sure, fast, to the point, hold it there. I want to take the time to say that your comments are very much appreciated. I read them all and answer as best I can. If you haven't already, I recommend you watch this series from the beginning. You can click here to go to the first episode. Enough talk! We're starting right... Wait for it... Now! A Milky Tracker song consists of a series of patterns, which in turn are instructions on how to play different instruments. We'll get into those later. Today's topic is the components of these instruments, namely the samples. Now click the Sample Editor button, or press Ctrl S. This is where we'll spend our time on making samples. There are more than one way to construct your instruments in Milky Tracker. One option is to import audio files. To do that, go to the Sample Editor and click Load. Supported file formats are .8SVX, .iff, .aif or .aiff, and .wav or wave. After that you have your sample loaded and ready for use. If you create a sample that you want to reuse in another tune, you can use this feature to save said sample and load it into the new project. Usually I create my samples from scratch in each song I make, with a few exceptions. These exceptions are my drum samples. Since these are a bit more advanced to create, I simply save them and use the previously mentioned method to load them. To create a sample, go to the Sample Editor. Now make sure you have the right instrument and sample selected. If you're in a blank project, simply go to Default, Instrument 01 and Sample 00. Now right-click the empty timeline and select New. When asked for a size, choose a power with base 2. For example, 2 to the power of 6 equals 64. I usually go with 64. The reason for this is that as long as you go with the power with base 2, the samples will stay in tune with each other. The size you choose will, however, affect the octave. If you go with a sample size of 32 instead of 64, the result will be an octave higher. Likewise, a sample size of 128 instead of 64 will result in sounding an octave lower. After this, you'll need to either generate a waveform or draw your own. We'll look into drawing waveforms in the upcoming drum sample tutorial. To generate this waveform, right-click in the now empty timeline and select Generators, and then click any but the top or bottom alternatives. Here we'll pick Sine, a simple sine waveform. In the next dialog, just go with the defaults, 100% volume and 1.0 period. If you remember your physics classes, you might find the following understandable. Otherwise, it might be confusing. Sound is a waveform. A waveform is said to have a period, and the period is the length of one wave cycle. This word is related to frequency, which also describes how often something occurs, but instead in cycles per second. To cut it short, choosing a higher value than 1.0 in the volume and period dialog window will result in more periods and thus a higher frequency. Higher pitch. I recommend you stay off these values, since it's easy to lose yourself in getting out of tune samples. Just one more critical option to edit and will produce actual sound. See down here? Drum samples don't loop, they just play once per trigger, but this waveform needs to play over and over in order to regenerate a tone. Change no loop to forward and you're set. Now some tips. In the main area of the window, where you'll soon write your song, you see a horizontal bar marking one of the rows. If this is purple, you're not in edit mode. If it's red, guess what? You're in edit mode. Use the spacebar to toggle this. Make sure you're not in edit mode. If you're not in edit mode, you can use the keyboard to try out your new sample without the fear of overriding your current pattern. Starting with Z and following the row of keys to the right, you can play as if you played a piano. A similar keyboard one octave higher starts at Q. That's two octaves. And if that's not enough, you can go lower or higher with the F keys. F5 is the default octave, and the keys F1 to F8 can all be used to switch octaves. Four, five, to the point, hold it there. That covers the basics of samples. In a future video, we'll look into drum samples and how to create those. Now my recommendation is you mess around a bit with the different waveforms available in the generator menu and try to listen for the different characteristics. See ya! Hopefully not too distant in the future.